Hello and welcome. In this video, finally we're gonna start the multiplayer. So to do that, I'm going to use netcode for game objects. And if you remember in the first video, we imported the netcode for game object package. So go ahead and import that. And now let's create a new script in the scripts folder. I'm going to name it session manager. So let's open this and let's create two functions one to start the server and another one to start the client by the way i'm not gonna add the option for the players to host their own games and the server is controlling the game so now we can say using unity.netcode and also let's create a singleton for session manager something like we did in the prefab manager so I'm going to take a copy of that and bring it here in the session manager, which we are going to replace that. Now for the start server, we're going to use network manager singleton start server. And for the client, we're going to say start client. And if we go to the canvas manager, we can add the two buttons, one to start the server and the other one to start the client let's create two functions for that that is a start server and the start client and in the start function we are going to add the listener for those buttons to these functions so for the start server first i'm gonna disable both buttons and then i'm gonna call session manager singleton dot start server and for the start client, I'm going to do the same thing, disable the buttons and call the start client in the session manager. Now, before we go further, first let's go to the browser and download a lit JSON package. So you can just Google lit JSON and it is a GitHub repository. That's it here. So that's the link. I'm going to put it in the description. So you could go ahead and download that and it is the public domain so it doesn't have a license so you don't need to be worrying about the license so let's go to the releases and i'm going to download the last one so that's it and now if i go to my desktop here it is i'm gonna extract it here so let's take a look where there's a bunch of files we don't need let's go to src that's the folder we need which contains these scripts so let's just drag that in our unity packages folder so here we go that's it now we have that in our project and we can use that now if we go to the session manager here we can say using lit json and that's it so here before we start the server Let's say network manager singleton dot on client connected. So we're going to listen for this event and I'm going to create a function for this event. Call it, let's say on client connected. So let's also remove the callback. So that's it on client connected. So for our session manager, we are going to inherit from network behavior instead of mono behavior. So before we do that, let's go to the Unity and here let's create the session manager and let's attach the session manager to this game object. Let's also rename this to session manager. So this session manager, we are going to add a network object to this and uh, let's uncheck synchronize transform so if we go back to the session manager now let's say network behavior so let's go to the character here we created an initialize function so whenever our character gets instantiated in the awake function we are calling initialize and we're gonna instantiate these items for that character as well. So let's first comment this. We are no longer going to call initialize from awake. So if we go to the actually initialize function, 
I'm going to make this a private function and let's add a underscore here. Let's also take a look here. We added a for loop for the amount of the items, but I kind of don't like that. So let's remove that for loop. In order to do that, I am going to delete that and delete that for loop. We can also get rid of this Boolean. We no longer need that. So that's it. And let's go up here in the start function. I'm going to rename this to initialize client RPC and it is going to be public. So for the character, we also need to inherit from network behavior. So let's go to our game and let me remove this. So our character, I am going to also add a network object. That's it. And I am going to apply the changes to the prefab. And then let's just delete that. And if we go back to the character, we can now inherit from network behavior. So let's go back to our function here, initialize client RPC. And I'm also going to add a client RPC. So it is going to take three variables. The first one is items JSON. The second one is items ID JSON. And the third one is a ulong for client ID. So we are going to call this function from session manager, but before we write the data for that, let's go and create two more variables. The first one is a ulong client ID, and the second one is an initialized, which is a Boolean. So first in the initialized client RPC, we're gonna check to see if it is initialized. If it is, we're gonna return. And then we're going to set initialize to true and client ID to the client ID that is being passed. So let's go to the session manager now. Here I am going to create a new function here and I am going to name it on client connected client RPC. So this is going to be a client RPC and we're going to call it from on client connected. So this is going to be executed on the server. So when we start a server, we're going to start listening on client connected. So this is going to be called whenever a client connects to the game and it is going to pass a client ID, which is a ulong. Then I'm going to call on client connected client RPC and I'm going to call this only on that client. So basically the server is going to call this on the client and says, okay, you just connected. What do you want to do? So here inside this, we're going to send a message to the server saying, okay, instantiate our character. So to send a message back to the server, I'm going to create a function called spawn character server RPC. And this one is a server RPC that does not require ownership. We need to also pass a account ID to the server, but that's something we're going to do later. So I'm just going to create a long. So here we need to instantiate a character for that client. First, we're going to get a prefab. For now, I'm just going to get the bot prefab. If our prefab is not null, then I'm going to just create a random position. And then I am going to instantiate the prefab on that position. And then we're going to use character, get component, network object, spawn with ownership, and we're going to pass the client ID. Now that we have instantiated the character, we need to pass the items of the character. If we go back to the character, here we used to do it in the awake function. So this is the initialize. Let's cut that and bring it here to the session manager. Here we go. This is the items. So for the items, I'm going to create a dictionary equals to new dictionary. Let's cut that and bring it here. So that's the items. Now we need to pass that to the character. Let's also create an ID for each item. So I'm just going to create a list of strings. We might want to use that ID later to do a lot of different things. So I'm going to loop through our items dictionary. And for each item, I am going to add a new ID. This is going to generate a random unique string. And I'm going to convert both the items and item IDs 
to string using the JSON mapper inside the lit JSON package that we just brought to our project. So let's go back to the character. We already created the initialize client. Let's create an initialize server, which is going to get a dictionary of items and item IDs and client ID. So we're gonna do the same thing we did here. We check to see if it is initialized and we're also going to assign initialize and client ID. So we need to call the private initialize now, this one here. So let's add another input. I'm gonna create a list of strings, items, ID. So now we can go back to the initialize server and call the initialize by passing items and items ID. We can do the same thing in the initialize client RPC by converting these strings to dictionary and list. And if they are not null, we are going to call the initialize. Also, if I open the item script, I can add another string, call it network ID and create a public getter and setter. So if we go back to the character in the initialize, here it is, create an integer called i, and at the end of this for each loop, each time I am going to add one to it. And up here, when I am um, instantiate the item, I'm gonna say item network ID equals to item ID i. Let's go to the session manager and here I'm going to call the character initialize server. I'm going to pass the items and items ID, also the client ID. And also I'm going to call initialize client RPC. This time I'm going to pass the JSON data for them. Now if I go to the third person character controller here in the awake function, let's actually cut that inside the start function and cut those at the end of the start function, let's say here. Let's also bring that one here. And we are using input system, so that's unnecessary. I'm going to check a condition here, and here I'm gonna say if character is not the owner, then uh, destroy this. Also, let's destroy the player input, input, controller and then return. Let's also remove the awake function. So if we go back to the unity, let's create an empty game object and name it network manager and add a network manager script. So let's set the transport, unity transport. And we are not going to assign a player prefab, but we need to assign some of the prefabs here. So let's go to the prefabs folder. I'm gonna create a new folder, name it network. By the way, if you use old versions of the netcode for game objects, you could just select the network manager and assign your prefabs here. But in the newer versions, you need to first create a netcode prefab list here. So I'm gonna do that and name it characters. So I'm gonna select these characters and assign my character to it. Let's create a new record. And that's it. That's my bot character inside the network prefab list. And now I'm going to select the network manager and assign this to the network prefabs list. So now let's go to the canvas and here let's create a button. So that's a button. Let's go and adjust the position of this button. I'm going to anchor it up there. Let's set the position here. I'm going to also change the text. Let's say start server and let's name this button server. And if I duplicate this and bring it here, this is gonna be button client. And for the text, let's say start client. So if we select our canvas where the canvas manager is, that is button server, and this is button 
client. Later on, we're gonna remove these buttons and we do things automatically. But right now, for the purpose of testing, we're gonna do it like this. Let's actually get a build for our project and test to see if it is working or not. So I'm just gonna create a folder here and name it build. So let's go ahead and build settings. I'm gonna build for Windows. So in the player settings, I'm gonna put it on windowed and that is the size I'm gonna choose. So, and now before we hit the build button, let's remove the sample scene and add the open scene here. And now we can build on the desktop build folder. So that's it. Okay, our build is finished. So let's start the project here and also start the build. So here we go. That is our build and that is our editor. We can choose one of them as the server, the other one as the client, doesn't matter which one. Let's do the server here. So I'm going to click start server. And for the other one, I'm going to click start client, which is going to instantiate the player for us. Also, let's take a look at the editor. See if we have it. Yep, this is our player over here. So let's take a look. If I go there, this is it. So if I move here, it's not gonna move in the server. So let's fix that. I'm going to use Alt F4 to exit from that. And let's just stop the editor. Okay, now let's go to the script. And here I'm just gonna create a folder, name it network. Well, actually let's name it the netcode. So inside this, I'm gonna create a script and name it client network transform now let's open this and at the top i am going to add using netcode.components and i'm gonna inherit from network transform and let's overwrite by saying protected overwrite on is server authoritative so we're gonna overwrite that and we are going to return false now let's save this and if we go back to the Unity and inside our prefabs in the characters, we select our bot and let's also add component client network transform that we just created. So we're not gonna sync the scale. So let's remove that. And if I go and get a build again, at the same location inside the build folder. And if we run the build and the editor, let's start the editor as the server and let's start this one as the client. Let's move around. You see that the character is gonna move on both server and the client. And let's go ahead and start another instance of the game. So that's another one. If I start another client, here we go. That's our second player. So we can start as many clients as we want. We can start a thousand one, but I don't recommend that. That's a lot of characters probably gonna crash the server. So that's it. That's the networking right over here. So I think I'm gonna finish the video here. And in the next video, I am going to sync the animation of the characters and maybe also sync the items if we find the time for it. So I hope you enjoyed the video so far. Make sure to like and subscribe and uh, thanks for watching.